you can. I've been uh, making these videos for oh, probably close to a year, 18 months now, and uh, most of the time I'm singing the praises of uh, retiring here in Thailand or living here in Thailand. But uh, what you have to understand is that uh, it doesn't suit everyone. It suits me fine, it suits me down to the ground, but it doesn't suit everyone. I've known people who've come here and hated it. I've known people who um, go to other countries like Malaysia and Jamaica and Italy and they've holidayed there many, many, many times but then they've decided to think, okay, when I retire, I'm gonna come and live here. But when they get there, um, it's not the same because everything's different. When you're on holiday, everything's exciting. Everything's, um, you know, just for a couple of weeks. But when you live here, you've got to take uh, the crunchy with the smooth. Uh, things don't always go the same as when you're on holidays just for two weeks. So today I want to try and uh, explain to you some of the things you might not like if you come here to retire or to live in Thailand. So number one on the list would be if you're uh, a stressful type of person and you don't like dealing with bureaucracy and officialdom, well Thailand might not be the place for you because you need to adapt uh, when you come here and you, you will have to deal a lot with bureaucracy everything about retiring here especially not so much if you're coming here as a, a, a tourist it's quite straightforward but if you want to live here long term say on a retirement visa the bureaucracy that goes with it and the paperwork and the hoop jumping that you've got to jump through uh, can take its toll thailand i mean i live in wahin it's not macclesfield in england it's not wagga wagga in australia it's not hicksville in the usa this is Thailand, and Thailand is not the same as the country you're going to leave behind. And it doesn't matter how many times you've holidayed here or visited here, you really need to come and spend some quality time before you give up everything at home and think, oh, I'm going to go and retire in Thailand. I met a couple in Malaysia uh, quite a few years ago who'd been holidaying in Malaysia most of their lives for many, many, many years. They'd been going to Malaysia they loved it they thought it was the best country they were from the UK from um, somewhere I think in Oxfordshire and uh, they always dreamed of retiring to Malaysia well when I met them they were packing up ready to go back to the UK and they told me that it just wasn't the same uh, when they were on holiday it was fantastic for two weeks four weeks a year but when they actually lived there uh, they didn't like it so much and they missed their lifestyle back in the UK they missed their family obviously they missed their going to the pub they missed the football they missed all sorts of things that you think oh I can leave them behind when you actually do leave them behind it's sometimes it's you can't uh, live without them you just it's part of your life you've been growing up with that all your life and when you've been on holidays You've only been away for four weeks, then you've gone back to your football and your pubs and everything that you like about the UK, the USA or Australia or wherever you're from and you go back to them. But when you live permanently 12 months of the year somewhere in a different environment, you sometimes do miss the things that you loved and grew up with. And these people uh, who I met in Penang in Malaysia, it cost them a lot of money because they didn't come here for say six months or a year to try it out first and uh, make sure that everything was going to be okay they sold everything up they sold their house they gave their dog away they uh, sold all their furniture they sold their car they, they, they just took the punt and thought yeah i'm gonna i love malaysia i'm gonna go and live there and i'm gonna buy a place there i'm gonna buy a car there so it doesn't really matter i'm still gonna get all the same things and they did. They came over and they bought a condo and they bought a car and they bought all the furniture and they started to live their lives. But after about six to eight months, they were getting miserable. They didn't like it anymore. So then they had to sell everything in Malaysia that they'd bought and then go back to the UK and buy everything again. 
and they probably wouldn't be able to buy their old house back uh, so they're gonna have to start again so uh, please just think about that if you are thinking about coming here and retiring come here for six months and rent a place for six months see the good and the bad but you do need to come and check it out lots of people don't do that and they're still happy because it depends on your own personal circumstances what you want out of life so not everyone does that not everyone comes here for six months or a year and tries it out and then goes back and sells everything some people take the punt and it works out for them uh, but other people they take the punt and it doesn't work out for them and it costs them a lot of time a lot of money and a lot of uh, heartbreak uh, you know when you when you leave your family behind in the UK or the USA and you say you're gonna go to uh, live in another country it can be uh, heartbreaking as well not just for yourselves but for your children or your, your grandchildren so number two on my list of uh, things that uh, you might not like about living in Thailand would be perhaps the language now most people from Western countries, they go on holidays and they expect that the locals will speak English. And in most countries, that's right, unless you're gonna to go to uh, somewhere that's out in the bush somewhere. But if you go to most touristy towns, the majority of people uh, speak enough English, at least to get by, you know, to order, so you can order your food or you can order your drink and you can get in a taxi, whatever. Uh, and that's true here in Thailand. All the big touristy towns and the cities, you know, Bangkok, uh, not maybe on the outer areas. Most people will speak enough English to get by, some fluent. Uh, but that's not true if you go to country towns. If you go to places like Konken, Udon Thani, Fitsanaluk, uh, Korat, uh, those sort of towns, then you might find it hard uh, to be understood and to, you know, you might want directions or you might want to order a meal or whatever, but you might find it very, very difficult. And also you'll find that everything's written in Thai. Whereas if you're in a tourist town, uh, the menus are written in English as well as Thai. Uh, so you might want to consider if you're coming here, learning the language a little bit first. I mean, that's a good thing to do. If, you, if, it's, you know, if you're planning on it and you're gonna take a year or so to get here, before you're thinking of coming uh, to live, then that gives you a year or so to uh, download an app on your computer or your phone and start to learn a little bit of Thai. Just the basics, how to order food, how to say hello, how to say goodbye, how to ask how someone is. It always helps. The more you know uh, Thai, the easier your lifestyle will be when you get here. Not only will it be easier, uh, you'll also be fine that, uh, that people treat you different because they think that, okay, you know, you've taken the time to learn the language. And another reason also is that you will find that you're not gonna get ripped off so much because people know that you live there because you speak the language, so they know that you know the prices and, and the, not like a tourist. The tourists come, you know, they don't know the difference. so. People can put extras on the bill or they can try and get a little bit more out of you uh, or charge you a little bit more uh, because they know that you're probably not coming back. But if you speak the language, there's a good chance that you, you live there and you're gonna go back to them. So they're not gonna rip you off so much. So that's a good thing as well. If you can do that, it will make it a lot easier. That's not a, a, a must, but it does help a lot because you'll find that a lot of these translate apps, you know, like Google Translate, they don't really work. You think you're saying something and uh, actually you might be saying the opposite. So if you can learn the language, it will help a lot if you're thinking of coming to live in Thailand or whatever country you're planning on going to live, try and learn that language if it's not an English speaking country. So that brings me to number three on my list, which is uh, the culture here in Thailand. Thailand's 95% Buddhist religion and that reflects in most of their lives and you're gonna have to adapt a lot if you're gonna come here and live if you're gonna expect to just come here and go into the ways that you lived in your old country uh, you're gonna find that very hard to do uh, there's lots of reasons for that uh, to start with said if you got into a relationship with a, a Thai person um, you're gonna find that uh, yes yeah, she might love you but um, 
the Thai family will always come first. That's inbred into them from day one. Uh, they look after their families first, and uh, the husband or the boyfriend um, uh, not, I wouldn't say not so important, but uh, they are probably secondary in their life. Their families come first. And I think that's a great thing for me. I mean, as long as uh, you get on well together and you, you love each other, that doesn't matter. But that is the way that Thai people live. They look after their parents as they get older. They um, adapt more to the family lifestyle than um, say a married lifestyle. They combine both, but uh, it can be sometimes hard to take. I've had three relationships here and their families are always gonna come first. And it took me a little while to understand that. Uh, I understand that now and uh, I make allowances for that. Also status uh, and causing loss of face to a Thai person can uh, be a big problem if you decide you wanna live here. Also in the UK, uh, you've got your royal family there and you can just about say what you want to say about them. If you don't like them, you can say, oh, I don't like them. Uh, you can uh, ridicule them, you can make jokes about them if you want, and there'll be no consequences. And that's how it should be, I suppose. You, you know, it's freedom of speech. But in Thailand, it is completely different. Um, you can't say anything bad about the King of Thailand. If you do, you can end up in a lot of trouble. So if you're a highly opinionated person, and uh, like to scream your views to the world, then Thailand might not be a great place for you to uh, come and live. It is completely different here. You, there's certain rules that you can't bend or break uh, about talking about people or about the king or about the government. So you do have to be very careful. Uh, talking about the government, the government is gonna be completely different from the government that uh, you come from in most Western countries, not all, uh, but most Western countries have a stable government. Thailand's had about seven military coups in the last 40 years or so, and they have a military government now. They say they don't. Prayot, the uh, Prime Minister, resigned from the army, but it, in all, to all intents and purposes, uh, it's still uh, a military country. And. Uh, if that doesn't suit you also, you should uh, take a hard look at it before you decide if you want to come here. So that brings me to number four on my reasons that Thailand might not be suitable for you as a place to live, and that would be alcohol. If you love a tipple, uh, Thailand could be the place for you in one respect, because the country does have a big drinking culture. But be careful not to fall into the trap that I've seen many expats fall into when they arrive here. In all the towns that I've lived here in Thailand, I pass bars on a morning that are frequented by expats, and I see many of them sitting, having a heart starter at uh, 10 a.m. And they're still there later on in the day when I'm returning from my walk. And quite often I might be going out a few hours later and they're still sat there chatting uh, with their expat mates. So many newcomers to the country fall into the trap of meeting up with other expats from their own countries or from other western countries and just go back to the way that they lived in their old lives back in their old country. Talking about football and politics and uh, what's happening in the UK, if they're from the UK or the USA if they're from the USA. Nothing wrong with that, it's good to keep in touch with your country, I do. I keep in contact with uh, Australian news, US news and uh, UK news and news from around the world. But if you're gonna come here, you need to try and embrace the country that you've adopted. Not just use it as an extension of your old life, enjoy the country for being Thailand, not the UK, not the USA, not Australia, not New Zealand, it's different. And you need to embrace that, not uh, just come here and try to pick up and uh, go uh, where um, people from your own country go and meet them and just sit around and talk about how life used to be when you lived in uh, your own country. Thailand's a beautiful country. Come and enjoy what it has to offer, not just come here and uh, start off your life uh, as you ended your own life in your own country. 
So that brings me around to number five on the reasons why Thailand might not be a great place for you to live or retire. And that would be driving here in Thailand. Driving in Thailand, uh, it's not an easy thing to do. If you're not a competent driver and you're thinking of coming here to live and you're thinking of traveling around in a car or a motorbike, um, you do need to be a competent driver. And even then, you're not gonna be guaranteed that things are gonna go well for you. Driving here, there are road rules. I just had to do my driving test three years ago uh, for a motorbike license. And yeah, they've got lots of rules. Uh, but the problem is the police don't police them and nobody obeys them, or very few people obey them. So it's uh, a very dangerous place if you're thinking about driving here. There's 20,000 people killed every year on the roads, but there's more than that because uh, when they report the deaths on the road, they only report the ones that have died at the scene of the accident, not the ones who go to hospital afterwards and die there. So there's probably closer to 25, 30,000 people die every year on the roads. So if you're thinking of coming here and you're thinking about driving around and doing the thing, yes, do it. It's, it's, I do it all the time. But you do have to keep in mind that it is very dangerous. If cars go past you speeding at 120 kilometers an hour. You never see police with radar, or very rarely. I've probably seen it once or twice in five and a half years I've been living here. The police have checkpoints where they stop you, and that's about it. Uh, and I don't know why they have them, actually. They, they just wave you through, but they seem to be everywhere in Thailand. You're driving, and there's like a checkpoint, and you have to stop, and they look in your window and look at you, and then they wave you on, or they pull you over to the side of the road if they think that you've done something wrong, or they think that they can maybe get a little bit of money from you. Uh, so driving here, yes, uh, comes with a lot of problems and uh, if you're thinking you're going to come here and, and just do what you do in your own country, um, uh, think again. So reason number six would be the climate here in Thailand. Now I know you probably think, uh, well that's why I'm coming there for, I love the climate. But when you come on holiday to a place like Thailand, you're only coming here for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks a year, and uh, you come here for that weather. Probably the country you're leaving behind has got a bad winter and you get trying to escape from, from that. So it's great, yeah. I, everyone loves to come and relax in the sun, but it is different uh, when you um, live here because it's 52 weeks of the year, 365 days of the year. And uh, it can sometimes be, too much for you if you're not a warm weather person. Personally, I am. I've lived in warm countries all my life since I escaped England in 1971 and uh, went searching for the sun. So I love the sun, but I also love the seasons. I love the wet season uh, here as well. But if you come here, you do have to expect that you're gonna be hot all year round, not just for uh, the few weeks that you spend here when you come here on holidays. It's, it's something you're going to have to deal with on a regular basis. And that can also be hard when you're staying in a, your house or your a condo, you know, you rent a place, because it gets very hot inside, so you're going to have to use the air conditioning and the fans a lot, where maybe the older countries you come from, you had the fire on or the heater on. Uh, here it's going to be the opposite, you're going to have to try and cool down. So, yeah, keep that in mind if you're going to come here. Um, I did explain earlier on about uh, some people who I uh, met in Malaysia. That was one of the reasons they wanted to go back. They missed the seasons back in their own country. They just got sick of waking up every morning to hot weather. So, number seven on my list of reasons that you might not uh, find Thailand uh, to your liking would be healthcare. Now when I say that, I'm, uh, I don't mean the healthcare is bad here, in fact it's fantastic here. I would put it down to one of the best places in Southeast Asia if you're going to need medical procedures. I think it was very high on the list of uh, medical tourism prior to Covid and uh, lots of people came here for getting procedures done because uh, it was cheaper than getting them done in the Western countries. But things have changed since Covid. Hospitals now are more expensive than they were then, uh, prior to COVID, and uh, 
even public hospitals. I went in the hospital when I first came here, I had an accident and I was in hospital for four days and I wasn't charged anything, but I believe now they're charging for everything. Uh, probably the public hospitals, not as much as the private hospitals. Private hospitals are fantastic here. There's many of them in most towns, most big towns. There's two or three private hospitals, but uh, you will find they're expensive. Uh, and if you're going to come from a country where your medical is free, like the UK and Australia, uh, then you're going to have to pay for it here. If you're suffering from ailments that uh, uh, are ongoing, then it could cost you money here if you need to go into hospital. Having said that, if you go to a pharmacy, uh, pharmaceuticals are a lot cheaper here than uh, what you would pay for in your own country. And also, what you also have to consider is that doctors like in uh, places like I've lived before where I had my own doctor in Australia, I had my own doctor in the UK. Um, so you don't get that here. You can go to a surgery, you can go to a clinic, or you can go to a hospital, uh, but you don't have uh, your own doctor here where you, he knows you and he knows your, uh, your problems and you deal with him on a regular basis. You might find that you're seeing different doctors each time you go to the hospital. So keep that in mind also, a lot of things to keep in mind, uh, but if you are coming here, it's gonna be completely different uh, how you go about uh, your medical procedures. Also, uh, there could be in the future where you will be required to have uh, mandatory health insurance. That's been talked about for quite a few years here in Thailand. Whether they're gonna do it, I don't know, I hope not. But if they do, and you're at a certain age, like me, I'm 71, it's very, very expensive. I'm gonna to have to think of my options if they ever bring that in, whether I'm gonna be able to afford to live here if they make me take out health insurance and have to pay on a monthly basis. Because it goes up every year, so it's not as if I, pay, I think, okay, I can afford it. Next year, it'll be more when I get to 72, and then when I'm 73, and so on. So it could, be a, a, a bad thing for me that I can't afford it and then I'm gonna to have to look for another country. So that brings me to reason number eight of uh, why it could be a problem living here and that would be the uncertainty of uh, getting a visa. In my case a retirement visa. I'll explain a little bit about that. When I moved to Australia many many years ago I was granted permanent residency visa and I've had that ever since. So that means that I never had to do anything. Once I got that, that's it. I, I can live there as long as I go by their rules. They didn't bother me. They never uh, said you've got to come and apply every year or you have to check in every once in a while. That was it. Uh, I was just forgotten about and I lived there for 40 odd years uh, without any problems. But here, every 12 months, I've got to go and renew my visa. And in between that, every 90 days, I've got to go and uh, tell them where I'm living. So it's not an easy task to live here. And it makes me feel as if I'm not 100% wanted here. Uh, where in Australia, once I got my visa there, that was it. I could buy a house, do whatever I wanted, live just like all the Australians who were born there. Nothing, there was nothing different. I could do everything the same as them. Where here, there's lots of things I can't do. I can't buy land, for instance, in my name. I can't buy a house in my name. I can buy a condo in my name. If there are 51% of people in the block of condos are Thai owners, then I can buy because I'm the minority. Uh, but uh, you find that your rights here are not as strong as in some countries where you retire. And that to me is a little bit of a worry. So if you're the type of person who uh, is looking for certainty in life, then Thailand uh, might not be the best place for you to live when it comes to visas. You're here at the courtesy of the Thai government. Once you do get your visa, your 12 month retirement visa or whatever visa you're planning on coming in, that means that yes, you're good for one year. It doesn't mean to say you're good for the rest of your life. A new government can come in and change the rules. The old government can just decide that they're changing the rules. So there's no real certainty of being here. And if you're a person who's looking for certainty in life, then uh, Thailand might not be the best place for you to come and live. I believe Malaysia has a 10 year uh, retirement visa. But on the other hand, you could go and 
retire in a country like Vietnam and there's no retirement visa. So what Thailand is offering is still good, but it's just there's no certainty to it. And that could uh, pose some problems to some people. To sum it up, um, Thailand for me ticks all the boxes, personally. But what I'm looking for in retirement and what you guys might be looking for in retirement uh, could be two different things. But for me, I love living here. The downside for me is the uncertainty of living here. I never feel, because of the way the visa system is run only on a 12 month basis, then uh, I feel as if um, I'm on borrowed time sometimes. I feel as if, uh, you know, I'm not 100% accepted here as a retiree, as in some countries. So I hope this helps you. Please come and look at the country if you think they're coming here. Come and spend some time here, spend some quality time, look around, check everything out and see if it's the right country for you before you make the big decision. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already done so, please push the subscribe button. If you're thinking of retiring or living in Thailand, please take a look at my book, The Retire in Thailand Handbook, the first six months. You can find it on Amazon. It's crammed full of information to help you tiptoe the logistics of making Thailand your home in retirement. Thanks a lot for watching my channel. So until next time, stay safe, keep smiling, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.